church just this one day. You can do it. You know, just sit at home, feeling sad for yourself, not trusting and having faith and believing in God. Because that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to forget the sovereignty and the sufficiency of the God that we serve. And God is still performing miracles. He doesn't change. He says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But you know who boxes him in? We do. But we don't have faith to believe for the impossible. But men, things are impossible. But the word of God says, but with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. And we have to remember that as we're walking through this life, as we're walking through these days, to remember that there is nothing too hard for God. Amen. And don't let the enemy trip you up. Amen? Amen. Don't make, don't let, allow the enemy to make you think that God can't do what you need him to do because he can. Amen. We are a living testimony yeah. of the greatness of God right here in this room. Amen? What is the situation you're facing, what is before you, but God is able. Amen. He said he's able to bless us above, beyond, and seemingly more than we could ever think or ask for. Amen. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we have assembled ourselves in your presence today, Lord. And, Father God, we thank you for your presence in this house today, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because you are God all by yourself, Father. Father God, you sit on the throne in heaven, and the earth is your footstool, O oh God. Father God, your eyes go to and fro throughout the earth, Father, and nothing is hid from you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, we have come to hear a word from you, Lord. Father God, I ask that you decrease me, Father, and speak through this clay vessel, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Because, God, we need a word from you. And, Father, we thank you. Because there is nothing too hard for you, Lord. There is nothing that's considered impossible for you, God. You are still performing miracles, Father. In the name of Jesus. And when the enemy is trying to dangle things in front of us, oh God, let us have the grace and the strength to withstand. In the name of Jesus. To remember to whom we belong, because we are your children, Father. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, we thank you. And we praise you, Lord. We thank you and praise you, Lord God, for all of your blessings, Father. We cannot praise you enough, Lord, because you have been and you are so good to us, Father. In the name of Jesus. And we give you thanks. And we give you all the honor that you deserve and, and you are worthy of it, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 in warfare every day. And every day we have a choice. Are we going to activate our faith? Are we going to walk by faith and not by sight? Are we going to believe what the word of God said and has said to us time and time again? Amen? So this morning we're going to be coming from 2 Kings chapter 4. Quite a bit of reading this morning. And it's starting at verse 8. To the end of the chapter. No, not to the end of the chapter. The verse 37. Amen? So we're going to be reading verses 8 to 37. And this is Elisha and the Shunammite woman. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, the word of God reads, One day Elisha went to the town of Shunam. A wealthy woman lived there, and she urged him to come to her home for a meal. After that, whenever he passed that way, he would stop there for something to eat. She said to her husband, I am sure this man who stops in from time to time is a holy man of God. Now, how does she know that? By the way he conducts himself. Amen. 
So can people say about us that we are holy people of God? Amen? Let's build a small room for him on the roof and furnish it with a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp. Then he will have a place to stay whenever he comes by. One day, Elisha returned to Shum, and he went up to his upper room to rest. He said to his servant Gehazi, tell the woman from Shum I want to speak to her. When she appeared, Elisha said to Gehazi, tell her we appreciate the kind concern you have shown us. What can we do for you? Can we put in a good word for you to the king or to the commander of the army? No, she replied, my family takes good care of me. Later, Elisha asked Gehazi, what can we do for her? Gehazi replied, she doesn't have a son and her husband is an old man. Call her back again, Elisha told him. When the woman returned, Elisha said to her as she stood in the doorway, next year at this time you'll be holding a son in your arms. No, my lord, she cried. O oh, man of God, don't deceive me and get my hopes up like that. But sure enough, the woman soon became pregnant, and at that time, the following year, she had a son, just as Elisha had said. One day when her child was older, he went out to help his father, who was working with the harvesters. Suddenly he cried out, my head hurts, my head hurts. His father said to one of the servants, carry him home to his mother. So the servant took him home, and his mother held him on her lap. But around noon time, he died. She carried him up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, then shut the door and left him there. She sent a message to her husband, sent one of the servants and a donkey so that I can hurry to the man of God and come right back. Why go today, he asked. It is neither a new moon festival nor a Sabbath. But she said it will be all right. And I know I think the King James Version says it shall be well. So she sat with the donkey and said to the servant, hurry. Don't slow down unless I tell you to. As she approached the man of God at Mount Carmel, Elisha saw her in the distance. He said to Gehazi, look, the woman from Shunem is coming. Run out to meet her and ask her, is everything all right with you, your husband, and your child? Yes, the woman told Gehazi, everything is fine. But when she came to the man of God in the mountain, she fell to the ground before him and caught hold of his feet. Gehazi began to push her away, but the man of God said, leave her alone. She is deeply troubled, but the Lord has not told me what it is. Then she said, did I ask you for a son? So she asked, did I ask you for this? <laughs> I prepared a place for you to come as you're traveling, to have a place to lay your head. I fed you. I did not ask you for this. Amen? Exactly. And now you're putting me through this? <laughs> I did not ask for this, right? And then she, and didn't I say, don't deceive me and get my hopes up? Then Elisha said to Gehazi, get ready to travel. Take my staff and go. Don't talk to anyone along the way. Go quickly and lay the staff on the child's face. But the boy's mother said, as surely as the Lord lives, and you yourself live, I won't go home unless you go with me. So Elisha returned with her. Gehazi hurried on ahead and laid the staff on the child's face, but nothing happened. There was no sign of life. He returned to meet Elisha and told him, the child is still dead. When Elisha arrived, the child was indeed dead, lying there on the prophet's bed. He went in alone and shut the door behind him and prayed to the Lord. Then he lay down on the child's body, placing his mouth on the child's mouth, his eyes on the child's eyes, and his hands on the child's hands. And as he stretched out on him, the child's body began to grow warm again. Elisha got up, walked back and forth across the room once, and then stretched himself out again on the child. This time the boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Then Elisha son of Gehazi called the child's mother, he said, and when she came in, Elisha said, here, take your son. She fell at his feet and bowed before him, overwhelmed with gratitude. Then she took her son in her arms and carried him downstairs. Look at that. And as I was reading the word and just talking to the Lord, you have to have faith. And she activated her faith. Because when her child died, she could immediately started crying and well, we would have been on the floor rolling, stressed her husband out, 
She didn't even say anything to him. Her husband was like, why do you want to go? It's not a new moon or a new Sabbath. It's no festival, so why do you need to see the man of God today? She said, just let me go and I'll be right back. Look at the faith that she had. Look at the faith that she had. And do we have faith like that today? So she took her son. He died in her arms. She took her son, laid him on the prophet's bed. She said, I'm going to go get this man because he's going to have to do something about this situation that I didn't ask for. I did not ask for heartache. And don't we do that to God sometimes? Like, Lord, I didn't ask for this, but God saw the end of the story. Amen? And then, even when Gehazi came to her, as we're going through situations and we're going through trials, we have to watch who we share stuff with. Because if we share it with the wrong person, what happens to our faith? It can, it can be diminished. Or people say, you know what, you should just, just give up. Don't, don't even try. Don't even try for that house. Deidre, you know that that's too much house for you. But God said not so, because he knew what he had in store for them. Just as he knew what he had in store for this woman that showed compassion on the man of God, she showed being a neighbor. And how often do we not do that? She said, let's prepare a place for him. And then he's looking around like, what can we do for you? And she says, there's nothing that I need because my family takes good care of me. But then the servant says, but I don't see a child. And she said, don't, don't get my hopes up. And God is faithful. Because that word came from the Lord. That did not come from Elisha. And God let him know, I'm going to bless her with a child. But how often do we want to blame that person that brought us that word when things don't go exactly like we think it should have gone? And we have to exercise discernment. She could have spilled everything out. You know how, how many people would we have called before we even made it to the man of God? To tell him about the situation. Whatever the case may be, it's going to be somebody that cut us off in traffic. We're going to tell 20 people about it. Do you know what happened to me today? Or you know how when your children act up and you got to call somebody, you, can you believe he or she said that to me? Instead of going to the source, which is God, and asking God to change that heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh and give them a new mind and give them a new mi a mindset, Father. And we tend to run and we want to always want to share. We want to share so much. But she said, just give me a donkey. Give me somebody to go with me. I've got to run this errand and everything is going to be okay. Amen. And we don't always get the answer that we want. But the sovereignty of God is the sovereignty of God. Amen. And he has the final say so. Because somebody would be quick to say, well, he didn't raise my child from the dead. You know? But that's God's choice. That is God's choice. Let his will be done. Because God knows what's best. It doesn't make sense to us sometimes. When he says yes to one person and no to somebody else, it's like, well, Lord, did you not see that I needed a car too? Did you not see that I want a place to live? And then I'm listening to all my brothers and sisters sharing their testimonies and I'm feeling forgotten over here. And God says, I have not forgotten. He didn't forget this woman and the generosity that she showed to the man of God. And because she had sown into his life, God blessed her. Amen. And I'm sure she had heard about how Elijah had raised the widow's son back in 1 Kings chapter 17. So I'm sure it's like, okay, now, Lord, you did it for that widow woman in Zarephath that I heard that story about? I know you can do it for me. Amen. 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 But we have to have the mentality also of the Hebrew boys that whether he does it or not, that he's yes. able. Yes. Whether the answer is yes or no. Knowing that God is able. Amen. And she activated her faith. She didn't go running and crying to her husband. She didn't go tell her husband, go get the man of God, go beat him down. He promised me a child, and yes, the promise came to pass, and now this has happened. She didn't do any of that. She so actually laid her child on the bed, on the prophet's bed. She could have put him on there, her bed. She had choices that she made. And we have to ask ourselves, what choices are we making? on a daily basis, 
to serve God, to be obedient to him, to say, God, I believe your word. I don't care what the situation is because her child had died. No pulse, no heartbeat. And she says, but it is well. Amen. And how often can we say that? How often do we say that? That it is well, regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstance. It is well. We just sang the song, my soul follows after you, God. So that means my heart, my mind, and my soul is following after the Lord. Everything that I am, God. And she laid it all out in faith. You promised, she said, didn't I tell you not to get my hopes up? Did I ask you for this? And when she said it, Elisha knew. And she was like, uh, it's not good enough that you're trying to sing a service. No, you need to come. Because the word came through you, so you need to fix this situation. Amen? Amen. And, and Elisha didn't give her any issues. He went. He told Gehazi, go ahead and go ahead of us. Run ahead of us. Gehazi laid that staff on the child. Nothing happened. But when the man of God laid on that child, and life came back into him. And what is it that we have today that brings life and death? Our tongue. Do we agree with what the word of God says? Are we going to speak the word of God to our situations? Or are we going to give in to our flesh and our emotions and what the enemy is trying to tell us is going to happen? <clears throat> Regardless of what's going on and all this chaos in the world today, and since we need to be praying, it's no time for us to be backing down in our prayer life. Amen. We need to be bombarding heaven for those that are not saved, first and most importantly, and then for those that make decisions that affect us. But she went straight to the man of God. And she didn't even tell him he had died. She just said, didn't I tell you, did I ask you for this? She didn't even say, listen, the child that you promised me is dead. On your bed. That's where I laid him. She didn't say any of that. She said, it is well. And what situation do you need to speak over today? And say, it is well. Well, regardless of what the bank account says, regardless of the report from the doctor, it is well. Regardless of how the children are acting up, what's going on in the workplace, it is well. It is well. And exercise discernment. Because I'm not going to go talk to somebody that don't have faith. Because I don't need to hear your doubts. I need to connect with those that have faith in God and that's going to believe him for the impossible. Because that's who we serve. And he is still performing miracles today. But are we going to tie his hands? Because God is not limited. We limit him by the way that we think and the way we process things. But God said, I'm able to bring money from out of nowhere if you really need it. I can have money to bring you food, just like that widow woman fed Elijah. She said, I just got this little bit left. He said, make me something to eat. And didn't God preserve her and her son through those days? And then he raised him up. And God is saying to us today, what is it that you need me to raise up? What needs new life breathed into it today? Amen. What do you need to say? It is well. College tuition, it is well. It is well. Needing a car, it, it is, is well. well. Family relationships, it, it is, is well. well. The doctor's report, it, it is, is well. well. 
having to go get an x-ray. It is well. Amen. That's what God is saying to us today. It is well. <laughs> Regardless of what the news says, it is well. It is well. It is well. If our economy crashes, it is well. Because well. God is going to take care of us. But see, we always want to know how you're going to do it, Lord. <laughs> Who you going to do it through, God? Where is it coming from? Because, you know, y'all, I'd like to see the finish. I'd like to see the finished picture. But that's not faith. Because says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. So we have to say, okay, Lord, even though I don't see it, I believe in you for it, God, that you're gonna that you're moving and that you're working in this situation. The family is coming together in this situation. Salvation has come to my safe children in the name of Jesus. It is well. It is well. So regardless of what you're facing today, it is well. It is well. Exercise that discernment. Watch who you share stuff with. Be with like-minded people that will believe God with you. You may stand to your feet. I know it's free. But I'm like, Lord, I'm just going to give what you gave me. Amen. It is well. You may be living in a hotel right now. It is well. Hallelujah. And then you may not even be driving the car you want to drive, but you have something to drive. It is well. When you have to go get on the bus, it is well. Because my God is still supplying my needs. It is well. I will not be moved and we will not be shaken by the things that we see occurring. It is well. It is well. And we have to know who we serve today. We serve a great God who is able to do great things. Great things. But you have to exercise your faith. You have to exercise your faith. And what are you confessing? Are you speaking the problem? Or are you speaking the solution? And the solution is Jesus. He has the answer for it all. Every problem that we face, Jesus says, I can solve it. If you just give it to me. Can you take your hands off of it? And let me work this situation for you. Have you invited him in to that situation? Or do you think, I can handle this part? But God is saying, he wants it all. Total surrender. Those things that nobody else knows about you, God is saying, I know. It. And I see. It. And I want you to give it to me. He is such a great God. He is so amazing, so loving, so kind, so merciful. Where would we be if God wasn't on our side? Look back over your life and see where God has brought you from. And this woman's child was dead. And she was like, I've got to get to the man of God. And how many of us are running to be at the feet of Jesus when that dead thing is before us? Are we taking it and laying it at his feet? Are we believing him for that marriage that seems dead and looks dead? But Lord says, it is well. But you're going to have to speak his word day in and day out. And when you get tired of speaking it, 
then you call one of your brothers and say, I need you to stand in faith with me. Because God is able. It's not too difficult for him. It's not. And you may be saying, I've been praying for years. It's okay. Because at the appointed time, his time, he's going to step in. But do you know that he's able? Then walk like it. And talk like it. And act like it. It's amazing to me as I drive and I look at people and sometimes they look so depressed. And it's like, Lord, I hope I don't look that way. Because I know what you're able to do, God. I know him to be a healer. I know him to be a deliverer. I know he can, he's a problem fixer. And regardless of your upbringing, regardless of what you've been taught, God is saying, get to know me for yourself. She didn't want to tell her husband and say, I need you to go to the man of God and do this, that, and the other. Just let me go. Let me go. And everything is going to be all right. What great faith. In the midst of the most sorrowful time of her life, she was still saying, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. She didn't give in to the emotions of the moment. She didn't start wailing and crying. And even when she got to the man of God, it wasn't a weeping and moaning. She said what needed to be said. And God honored her faith. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. Because she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, he only had to touch me. If I can just touch a piece of his clothing, she said, I will be made whole. And Jesus said, thy faith has made me whole. Her faith. And that's what we have to live by. The just shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. We're not dependent upon this world's economy. God is our source. And he knows how to bless us. He has blessings in store for us that we don't even know. When Brother Jose needed money for his car, didn't even know there was money in Puerto Rico. But God opened up that door for him. And his car is sitting in the parking lot right now. Because he said, I know God is going to do it. God is not limited by what, we, by what we have and by what we can see. He says, I can bless you in ways you can't even begin to imagine. But do you have the faith to say, even in the midst of your storm, it is well. It is well. Yes, I can't see the end of the picture. But God, you can. And you said it is well. And that's what he's speaking to us today. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that your word does not return to your void, but it prospers where you have sent it, Father. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, even when we're in the darkest pit, Father, let your Holy Spirit rise within us to give us the strength to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we lift up unsaved loved ones today. That Father God, that their eyes will be opened and that they will see their need for a Savior. And Lord God, those children that were raised in the Word and they strayed away, Father, bring them back in, oh God. The children, the grandchildren, the aunts, the uncles, the mothers, and the fathers, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, we release your word to go and do what only it can, Father. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, we pray right now, Lord God. For this ministry, Father. That the spiritual gifts will rise up in this house, oh God. In the name of Jesus, that you will have free reign, oh God. In the name of Jesus, 
You say where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And Father, we declare today, in the name of Jesus, we are no longer entangled with the yoke of bondage, but we are free in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Father God, the enemy tries to bind us up, oh God. But you sent your word to free us, Father. And God, let your truth pierce the darkness in this world today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And we will be salt and light, Father. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for every soul under the sound of my voice, Father. You see their needs, oh God. Meet them at their point of need, Father. Let their faith be activated today. Let it go to another level today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Father God, when we feel low, let us reach out for you first, Father. To run to the altar, oh God. To find the help that we need in our time of trouble. In the name of Jesus. I pray a prayer of abundance today. Spiritually first, oh God, that will be made manifest in every area of our lives, Father. In the name of Jesus. There are financial needs in this house, oh God. And I pray, Father, that you will multiply like never before, Father. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. And we praise you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.